Since the time Andre Karpathi posted about context engineering on his Twitter, this term has gained a lot of momentum over the internet. It went to a level where folks at Cognition called it number one skills for engineers building AI agents. The goal of this video is to explain context engineer in a most intuitive language such that even a high school student can understand it easily. Context engineering is a natural evolution of prompt engineering. So let's summarize what is prompt engineering. Let's say you are summarizing an article and you write this prompt, summarize the following article. This is very generic prompt and it will produce a very generic output. If you are a good prompt engineer, you will give a specific prompt saying that Summarize the article in following three bullet points. You will mention your bullet points. You will also say use simple, clear language suitable for high school students. So you will specify the audience which is going to consume this. So this is prompt engineering. Now, when you talk about agents, you give an action to an agent such as book a flight between two places and an agent will have access to tools such as Expedia API and using these tools, it will first search for flights. So let's say five different flights, then it will decide which is the cheapest one. Let's say this is the cheapest one and it will book the flight. So an agent is nothing but a program which is using LLM along with tools, knowledge, memory, etc., to perform autonomous action. Previously, when we were looking at the Q&A chat board, it's just simple question and answer, whereas agent will perform an action autonomously. Now internally it will take multiple turns. What I mean by that is when you say you can book a flight between place A and B, it will actually first, it will make LLM a call, right? So this is let's say first turn. Okay. So this is T-U-R-N first turn where it will determine the plan that it needs to do all these three actions and it will perform the first action which is searching the flight. In the second turn or a third turn, it will look at the Expedia API. It will find the flights, right? So it see it's found all these flights. So this is turn number two. Then it will decide the cheapest flight. So that will be turn number three. Then turn number four, five. It might perform n number of turns, which is n number of LLM calls along with this specific prompt to accomplish a goal. Now here, these prompts are generated by LLM. It's not like you are manually generating all these prompts, right? You don't have time for it. When you're building LLM application, let's say an agent, it will do this thing autonomously. Now you run into this risk where these turns might get costly. You know, it might increase your LLM uh, API cost bill also. If there is a problem in one of these prompts, it will misbehave, right? It will take an action that you don't want it to take. So there is certain risk in terms of generating these intermediate prompts or intermediate context, right? This is the context that you're giving to your LLM. And in these terms, whatever context is being generated, it has to be really good and accurate. Now here, you can see that every time I am appending to the previous context. So if you give more information, if you give the information of the previous context uh, from the previous turn, it is going to be useful in general. But the problem with in appending to this uh, context is that you might uh, run out of your context window, right? So this is the diagram I took from Cognition blog where Let's say the agent will break down the task for our flight scenario. Then this is a subtask one, right? And let's say uh, it is appending that context. Then it is appending a new context. Now you might run into this context overflow. Not only the length of the context is a problem. Let's say even if you don't run into context overflow, longer context will result into some other problems too. I'm going to link this article in a video description. Please read through it. It says how long context will fail. You will run into four different problems. The first one is context poisoning, then context distraction, context confusion and context clash. I don't want to go through these in detail because then this video will become too longer, but read through this article. Just remember that not having a proper content in the context will result into numerous problems for your agent. 
Therefore, what you need is context engineering. As per Andre Karpathy, who prefers the term context engineering over prompt engineering, uh, the Twitter says people associate prompts with short task description. You would give an LLM in your day to day use. That is your prompt engineering. But when you are building industrial strength LLM app, it can be a workflow app or it can be an agent. Context engineering is the delicate art and science of filling the context window with just the right information for the next step. So you have a context window and you want to fill that in context with the exactly the right information. So it becomes art as well as science. As per cognition, prompt engineering was coined as a term for the afford needing to write your task in the ideal format for LLM chatbot. Right for the chatbot, you are writing a good prompt, which is good enough for that narrow task that you're performing. Whereas context engineering is the next level of this. It's an evolution of prompt engineering. It is about doing this automatically in a dynamic system. Dynamic system is your agent. You remember those turn one, turn two, turn three, where agent is producing that context, you are not writing it. In that dynamic system, you want to do this in a very effective way. It takes more nuances and is effectively the number one job. Folks, if you are an AI engineer, if you are an AI agent engineer building agents, this is a number one skill that you need to have for anybody who is building AI agents. So essentially, if you consider LLM as a brain, okay, so let's say LLM as a brain, or let's say CPU, then this context window is a RAM for your computer. And if you have good quality or data in your RAM, your output will be better. And context window, you know, context engineering is all about getting the right content inside your context. And how do you get that content? Well, through three different ways. One is through tools. So let's say when you are looking at Expedia APIs, you want to get the right information on the flights by calling Expedia API and that information you got through a tool call. Second one is a knowledge. If you are building a rag based system and let's say you are doing something with your database, you pull the information from your Oracle or MySQL database. That is your knowledge. It can be PDF file too. And the third one is instruction. So this is your prompt engineering. You write the proper instructions. There are four common strategies for context engineering as per Langchain. And we are going to go through each of them quickly. The first one is context compression. So when you run into this context overflow situation where your context is very, very big, one obvious technique you can deploy is you can compress the context. So whatever conversation and actions you have so far, you see this green box. Now you that box has become little thinner. So you will remove unnecessary information from this context or you will extract only useful information. See key moments and decisions from that context and you will make that context smaller It each turn. So this is the first turn in the second turn. This particular context you make it, you compress it. This one you compress it and that way you your context is not only good quality, but you are also respecting that context window limit, which every LLM will have different token limit. Then the second one is writing the context. So for writing the context, you can use uh, something called a scratch pad. So scratch pad is uh, something you can implement uh, with a tool call. So let's say you have a simple tool call, which is writing uh, to a file on a disk. And this scratch pad is different than your LLM context. So let's say your LLM context window has a limit of 30,000 tokens. So that window is there. On top of that, it's like as a human, you know, you have a notepad. And when you're having a conversation, you will make points in that notepad. So that notepad is a scratch pad. But in your brain, you will remember that information. So that remembering information in brain is your LLM context window. So this is an additional basically memory that you get. And it can be implemented easily with a tool call, which just writes to a file on a disk. This is useful for an agent session. The second thing that is useful for an agent session is a state. So if you have uh, work with Langgraph, uh, we have a Langgraph tutorial on our YouTube channel. In Langgraph, there is a state that you will pass across all the nodes. That is also within the agent session. So you can use that state to write information, meaningful information for the context. And if you use ChatGPT, 
uh, whatever your past conversations are, ChatGPT remembers that. You might have noticed that if you turn off your computer today, tomorrow if you turn on your computer, which is a different session in ChatGPT, and if you say, okay, uh, define my personality based on past conversation, it will define it. So that is using long-term memory and it is valid across agent sessions, okay? So these are the three techniques uh, that you use for right context and it means saving it outside the context window to help an agent or a workflow application perform a task. And once you have saved this information, the second uh, step is obviously retrieving that, right? Retrieving that context. It's called selecting the context. And in that, of course, you are retrieving from long-term memory, that chat GPT example that I gave. Then you are retrieving relevant knowledge. This one is a RAG. So when you're performing a RAG, you will have vector database from which you will retrieve necessary context that you can pass to LLM. And this RAG is nothing, this retrieving information through RAG method is nothing but selecting the context, okay? You can do the same thing from Scratchpad you are retrieving, from relevant tools you are retrieving. So that is the second strategy, which is selecting the right context in an efficient manner. And then comes, I think the third strategy is compressing the context. So the fourth one is isolating the context. Let's say you are working on a big task and you, you are building multi-agent system where you can divide that task across two agents. So that will reduce your individual context window for the agents, right? So this is the context window for context for agent one. This is for agent two. And since you have divided them, individual context window will not only be shorter, but it will also be more relevant. More, it will be high quality for that agent one. Okay. Now, building multi-agent system also comes with certain risk. So you have to be very mindful. You have to uh, make sure that you can really uh, parallelize this work. In some cases, you can't parallelize this work. Right? You have to do things in a sequence because agent two relies on the output from agent one. So based on the situation, you can use this isolating context approach. So those are the four strategy. I'm going to link another blog from Langchain, which will describe these four strategies in detail. So let's go through Andre's uh, tweet in detail. So he prefers context engineering over prompt engineering, especially for the people who are building AI agents. And what he says that it is an art delicate art and science okay what you fill in your context basically so context engineering is nothing but delicate art and science of how you fill the context window with just the right information and high quality information so that it is useful for the next step and it is science because doing this right involves task descriptions and explanations few short examples right you are filling right kind of few short examples because Let's say you have 2000 token context window. It's like you have limited currency and you have to use those token very accurately. So let's say if you are providing too few short example, you have to provide very good, high quality, diverse examples. Then drag, okay, related data, uh, then tools, what tool calls you're making, what kind of output tool call is returning. Sometimes these tools will return big output and 80% of this output might not be even relevant to the LLM. So you have to tweak your tool calls and provide exactly the right output. Then state, history, compacting, too little or the wrong information and the LLM doesn't have the right context for the optimal performance. If you have too much or too irrelevant context, then LLM cost might go up and performance might come down. Okay, doing this well is highly non-trivial. So folks, there is no fixed set of guidelines. Therefore, it is called art and science, okay? And art, because of the guiding intuition of, uh, around LLM psychology of paper spirit. I hope this video helped you understand context engineering. If you have any questions, please post in the comment box below. Once again, check video description for all relevant articles and information. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends.